What is up, guys? Bullethead for the win here. And I've got a new commentary for you all. And uh, it's going to be a bit of a different commentary. And, uh, you know, I was saying that, like, my newest video is going to be about, you know, pigging for football, um, all types of different things. But I heard this story the other night, and I had to do a video for it. Because I felt like this information needs to be known for everyone. And I know one YouTuber, I mean, I know at least one YouTuber has covered it. And his name is uh, The Event Status. He, um, one of my longtime favorite YouTubers right now, he, you know, instead of me watching the news, I go to him for current events that are going on, you know, that are in our society that are, you know, a big problem or even, you know, something that you want to know. So, as most of us know, well, I hope all of us know, that HIV and AIDS has been an ongoing problem in society for a while now. And HIV had a cocktail that you'd be able to take that it would keep it at HIV. Which means that, you know, you couldn't get rid of it, but it would slow down the process of HIV becoming AIDS. But now, um, there's been an enzyme that, I read the article, it's not really sticking in my head too well, but there's been an enzyme found that was, you know, developed by some people that is believed to be like the first step in finally making this disease part of history and, you know, not no longer affecting human beings. Now... You might be asking, wow, it's amazing, you know, who found this stuff? Who found this enzyme? And the crazy part is, it wasn't, you know, people that spend five years for a degree in medicine or people that go to college, you know, that spend, you know, $50,000 a year in schooling. It was actually a, a group of guys that play video games. Yes, <laughs> video games. Now you're saying, how is that possible? How can these guys do it? Now... If you play video games, you realize that after a while you develop a certain sort of skill that you have a, the ability to look at things in different ways. So you have these scientists that are sitting in front of a computer screen for days on end looking at this thing from one direction, and their mind isn't trained to look at it on different ways. They're actually trained in school to look at it in one direction and not many. That's why school is a little tricky in my opinion because if you are creative, they make you think in one way and one way only. and That's the way they want you to learn, which I think is completely wrong. But that's off the subject. So you had these, you know, these trained people, these trained people that are supposed to be like solving world issues with diseases and viruses and everything, and they couldn't figure it out. Now they got this group of guys, and it was like ten or so guys together, to work on this enzyme and to see if they could figure it out. It took them three weeks to develop the proper, you know, whatever diagram of this enzyme, and they did it. Three weeks. Three weeks. Now, is there? You know, why isn't that on the news? You know, like I said, I don't watch the news because of this bullshit. Gamers are constantly picked on and, you know, oh, okay, this game's violent. Like, like remember, like, two years ago when they had the whole Mass Effect thing? How they were like, oh, you can have uh, alien sex in Mass Effect. Did they realize that in order for you to have alien sex, you'd have to, you know, take out ten hours of your time to talk to this one character? So if it's anyone's fault, it's the person playing the game's fault. And also, there's a rated M for mature stamp on the fucking game, so it shouldn't be a big deal. That's like saying, like, I went to the movie theater to go watch, what, is a, that's the Swan movie, where the girl takes a broomstick or whatever. <laughs> it's like, that's inappropriate. It's, it's for an audience that it's supposed to be appropriate for. Moving on from there, it's like, it's just such bullshit. How... You have these people that are trained to do this and they couldn't figure it out. But then you have these gamers, it took them three weeks to do it. And you don't hear about it because that would make gamers look like they actually accomplished something. Now isn't that ridiculous? I mean, majority of people who watch videos and commentaries are gamers themselves. So if you guys, like, if you guys, I want you guys to read this article, I'll put the link down in the description. But stand up for yourselves, man. You guys are just put down every single day by people who say, okay, they're nerds, they're this, they're that. Well, guess what? We're at the first step close. We're a step closer to solving this whole AIDS issue, and you know why? Because of Xbox, because of PlayStation, because of PC, because of these people that can look at things in a different way. So don't say video games aren't there to help you, and they're a waste of time. If you, if more people play video games, it, you know, look at it this way. Yeah, you know, instead of playing Xbox, I mean, you could be studying for your exam. You could be doing homework, but everything. If you play everything right, if you do everything in small, like. I like the pieces of things like if okay let's say it's healthy to play football 
if all you do is play football, you don't study for school, and you don't do anything else, you're not gonna be a, you're not gonna be a healthy human being. It's called the triangle of health, people: social, mental, and physical. You might be physically healthy, but your mental health is gonna be stupid, and your social skills are gonna be nothing because all you can do is hit people. You know, and I know if you play Xbox too much, you're gonna have no social skills, no uh, physical skills, but you know your mental skills might be advanced because you look, you can look at things in different ways. And you have people like psychologists and everyone else that say video games help with people expanding their thoughts on things. You can look at things in different ways. You can train your mind to think in different ways. And that is the most important thing about being a human being is not looking at things in one direction. Being able to hold it with your hand and say, listen, I can do it this way, I can do it that way. That is the most important thing that, you know, that's what humans were made to be. They were made to think of things in different ways, to make their own decisions. And when someone sits you in a classroom and teaches you this one thing and one way to do things, and if you don't think this way, you're wrong, that's a problem. And it's been ongoing for a while, and I already said that. But I just figured that I'd let you guys know about this whole enzyme, the deal, and, you know, the online gamers crack AIDS enzyme puzzle. I'm looking at the article for as we speak. But I, I think I thought I'd also get to, uh, you know, some football, th some football news. Um, James Harrison, outside linebacker for the Steelers, has a broken orbital bone. He might be out for the rest of the year. I'm not even sure. But it's not looking too good. I, I, knowing him, he'll be out for two weeks at the most because he's just a, he's just a tank. Um, Big Ben has an injury for his uh his um what the fuck for his for his ankle. Now he's had ankle injuries before that never really held him back. Like he's he's played with casts on and shit like that. But it's just it's not looking too good for the Steelers this year. Now I'm not gonna cave in just yet because they have one of the best coaches in football. But at the same time, man, when are they going to wake up? Like, I did a whole rant on how, like, they can't get an offensive lineman and, and shit. And I st still stand there because it's it's it shouldn't take this long for someone to realize, hey, we need, do we, need to, we need to do something here. This is this is crazy. And it's just, I don't, I don't know. I really don't understand these people whatsoever. But um, an important thing to look at is I was just looking at the stats, you know, for the, for the uh, standings for the AFC North. And uh, the Steelers are negative eight in differential in points. That I've never seen that before for the Steelers. Well, the Ravens are 62, plus 62 points. That's awesome. I gotta hand it to the Ravens, man. They're kicking ass this year. But off to what, how the Steelers are, or what they're doing this year, or next week, this week, whatever. They're playing the Titans. Now, the Titans, they're not a terrible team this year. I mean. Matt Hasselbeck's actually playing pretty, pretty hard. And, you know, as a result of that, they're winning games. You know, they beat the Ravens, which I was ecstatic about when they lost to them. But besides that, let's look at this. Um, that's weird. Um, you have Chris Johnson who can't run the ball. You have Mendenhall who can't run the ball. So those two offset each other, right? Now you have Kenny Britt on the Tennessee side who's hurt. And the receivers on the Pittsburgh are fine. So... It, when I look at it that way, I think the Steelers do have a chance of winning this game because of their receiving core and because of the fact that Tennessee has a pretty much no pass rush left. I mean, I'm not going to say no pass rush, but they're really hard into that position because they lost Jason Babin. But I don't know. I feel the Steelers will pull this game out like maybe by, uh, let's go 24 to 10. I think that's going to be the final score. I think Big Ben's going to have a big game. He's going to throw for 400 yards and have three touchdowns. That's just my opinion. So, uh, besides the Steelers, I'm only going to cover the Steelers and Ravens. Mostly, see how much time I have left. Let's see how much time I have left. Oh, okay. Nine minute mark. Not bad. Now, the Ravens are playing. Dun dun dun. The Texans. Ooh, <laughs> that's going to be pretty nice. It's going to be a pretty good game. The, um,. So they're playing the Texans, and the Texans didn't really manhandle the Steelers like everyone thought they were going to. But, you know. Oh, you know what? They have a bye week, but after that, they're playing the Texans. So I guess they'll cover their next week, even though they have a bye week this week. Um, so when they play the Texans, they're going to be going up against a good running game against Aaron Foster and Ben Tate. Uh, ben Tate's hurt, though, so I don't know if he's going to be into the, into the whole thing, into the game at all. But pro he'll probably be ready by that because they have a bye week. But, uh, what can I say? Like, Johnson, the receiver, he's hurt. Big fucking deal. You have their tight end, who's a beast, who's a beast. 
and all that. But, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's going to be a tough game because these two teams are pretty much, they match each other pretty well. Vontae Leach is going to go see his old team, which I think is pretty cool. But um, besides that, I think football is up for, uh, you know, we're up for a good weekend this Sunday night. I'm going to the Giants game because I live in New York. And they play in the Seahawks, which I think is all right. But, you know, this commentary is coming to a close here. i got like 20 seconds left. But another thing, the NBA lockout, you heard it here first. They're going to get this thing solved, and you're going to see this shit starting. I think we're going to miss the first week of the season, two weeks of the season. But I, I really feel in my gut and my heart that this season will start on a high note, and it will be a good season. And you're going to see the Miami Heat win it all. Yes. Miami Heat will win it all. LeBron James is going to have the best season of his career. All right, guys. It's Blooded for the win here, and I'm signing out. Peace.